What is going on, savages? Hope everyone is doing awesome. I'm doing pretty good, thanks for asking. We have been covering Ryo this whole week, actually for more than a week now, uh, or we're, we're actually right at a week, uh, exactly seven days. And uh, in this Savage video, we're going to summarize what Ryo is and maybe cover some things that maybe we, you know, uh, didn't cover in depth or kind of uh, glossed over and didn't really get get into it, you know, or, or just stuff that we just straight up missed. So uh, let's get into it. So before we get going, let's take a quick look at what I am mining. I just switched the rigs over to Ryo, actually. Um, I'm probably going to stick with them for a little while. I don't know how long, but I'm going to uh, support the project with my hash power and hope for the best. <laughs> so I'm going to do that for at least a week probably over here. And then on the shared rigs, I'm still mining CCX. These are the co-owned rigs. And just so you know, tomorrow night, supposed to, at least we're supposed to, uh, the, the co-owners, the folks that are, uh, you know, uh, own these rigs with me are actually supposed to be in the chat or in the stream. And we're, tomorrow, tomorrow's show is gonna kinda go through the process of, of what I have to go through every month to kinda uh, you know, transfer the funds around, make things right for electrical costs and uh, how we're going to, what we're going to do with the funds that we have in the wallet already, what we're going to intend on mining for the following month and things like that. Um, I'm sure we're going to stay on Conceal CCX, um, you know, for another month, but it uh, should be kind of interesting. Uh, hopefully those guys show up and, you know, offer uh, their votes basically into uh, what we are going to be mining and how we're going to handle the funds. So uh, stick around for that tomorrow night. Not stick around, but, you know, tomorrow night, that's what we're going to be going over to, uh, over uh, tomorrow. So join us for that. Should be kind of interesting. And then also make sure that if you like content like this, you follow me over here on YouTube, follow my channel. I've been killing the Ryo game uh, for like a week now. I did a couple of extra videos in between. I uh, didn't just do Ryo, so this is what it kind of looks like this week for the past seven days. I did a beam wallet upgrade and also a fan replacement video here on a Gigabyte Aorus um, RX 580. So all this stuff is real time, live stream, so there's not much planning that goes into it. It's just kind of like real world scenario stuff, especially like the the um, fan replacement and wallet upgrades and things like that. Normally I do not practice before I actually do the stream. So you're, what you're seeing is usually, I mean, there might be uh, some, some instances where I just make sure that things are gonna go kind of smooth. But for the most part, I, I stop whenever it's something that I think that I should do live uh, rather than, um, you know, than like practice it in the background and actually uh, work through a problem or something like that. There will be times that I do that. It just depends on on the situation. But for the most part, everything is real time and real world scenarios. So I think that that kind of adds a little bit of value to the space and that's why I do it. Also follow me on Twitter because over here, I keep you guys uh, updated on what's going on on the channel. I try to keep this to a two platform uh, point of contact. I know that that's probably against the general rules you know, most people have 10 or 12 or 14 different social medias and they try to do it all. I can't do that. I'm going to try to limit it and just, um, you know, try to keep it on Twitter and YouTube and that's it. And it's possible at some point I might actually get off of Twitter and just be on uh, YouTube. So I try to keep it simple, right? For the people who are interested in my content and things like that, I think that that works out better instead of having, you know, multi-platform, 10 different things that, you know, people can look at. Although, I mean, I know that there's strategy for that, but it's just, it's just not my strategy. <laughs> so I hope, you, I hope you guys can understand that because it would be really time consuming to do that. Uh, you know, doing this by myself, it's rough. I'm just doing just a little bit of content that I do. So um, not really interacting with the chat. Just let me, let me check over here, see what's going on. What's up LP? What's up Serpent? 
What's up, Crypto Knight? Uh, pool I'm mining on for Ryo right now. I think it's just whatever I put in here. It would probably be... Uh, honestly, I don't know. I just did it like right before the show. Uh, it looks like Miner Rocks is what I'm using. So if we go over here to Mining Pool Stat Stream, dot stream, we look at Ryo. We'll see where that sits. It's gonna be at the top, yeah. I mean, they have the majority of the hash rate. I would probably, yeah, it, since I'm going to be mining this for real, I, I will switch over to Fair, fair Pool based on these numbers here, for sure. Although, I, I don't know, I mean, the number of miners is pretty close. I don't know, I'll have to look at it, but I, there's a good chance I'll switch over to Fair Pool. Like I said, I just did that literally f five minutes before the stream started, so I just haven't had time to really mess with it. Yeah, see, now they're off, because the rigs are off, because, uh, you know, because of the stream, they're just too loud. All right, so let's get back to the content here. Uh, now back to the show. So we've been covering Ryo, and just I wanted to do like a summary video and just kind of summarize everything and kind of go over some things that maybe we missed and things like that. So uh, Ryo is, I'm just going to start at the top and kind of blast through this. Ryo is a rapid development project focused on security and privacy. Started in June of 2018 and ran by, by devs FireEyes UK and PsychoCrypt. And FireEyes UK is on Twitter. So if you go to FireEyes UK, I love this. This is hilarious. Um, he's got 1,310 followers and he's following zero. <laughs> That's great. All right. Um, he follows no one. So, And then PsychoCrypt, I don't think, is on Twitter. Uh, he's the other core dev. And then you also have Mosu Forge, and he's on Twitter, I believe. And he does a lot of uh, the, the web interfaces and the, and the wallets and things like that. He's uh, really good with that stuff. And then you also have, I think he, he, he created the, the, the Atom wallet, you know, with the first solo mining feature in any crypto, kryptonite wallet. So that's really cool. They also have, uh, and we covered that video actually, I, I covered the solo mining, so you can check out that video uh, as well. They also have contributors, uh, Ryo, RU, and Nostradamus411. So be sure to check them out if you're interested in this project. These guys are the, the folks to follow for sure. And I can't believe I mean, these devs have made, they, they've done so much and there's only just a few of them. It's, it's really amazing to see. Uh, I mean, I can't believe the progress that they've made and, and just how uh, intense this project is. I mean, it's really cool. And I gotta reiterate, this, none of this, this whole week and all these videos, none of this stuff is sponsored, guys. This is just me finally looking at Ryo because there were people that were hitting me up all the time in, on Twitter and, and on Facebook comment or not Facebook good grief that was a that was a slip I'm not even on Facebook um, on YouTube uh, and they were always hitting me up like hey like anytime I would post something about privacy coins and this and that you know like a list of the best privacy privacy coins or whatever and then <laughs> people would say but you're forgetting Ryo and like I said at the top, in the beginning, whenever I first started looking at it, it was always controversy. And every time that I would in, I would start researching it, I was like, I just don't want to. I don't want to deal with that part of it. And I, actually, I told myself tonight I wasn't even going to bring it up. But uh, it just kind of it was something that I looked at, and it just kind of turned me off right away. But I'm glad that I I kind of overlooked that, and I was like, look, I gotta I gotta listen to what my uh, followers and viewers are saying I mean they're all saying that it's a good project so I, I, I looked at it again I did I did a show on it like last year sometime on how to mine it and stuff but that was uh, early on and I, I'm glad I finally did it's a good project I, I don't have anything you know I don't have any uh, problems with them at all actually so I'm glad that I actually got to look at it again but also it is not spot. None of this stuff is sponsored. I'm just doing. I'm just covering things that I'm interested in. Like I say all the time. So, 
just keep that in mind. I'm not not sponsored. Uh, I did get a, a donation from one of the contributors, but other than that, um, nothing. So it's not sponsored in any way. So just just remember that whenever I'm talking about this stuff, because I don't I don't do really I don't do sponsored content. So if if I'm talking about it, it's just because I want to talk about it. So uh, yeah, and these devs have also made a bunch of other significant contributions to the space, the crypto space. Um, why is my mouse not working here? There we go. Uh, they they also created the XMR Stack Miner, which is arguably the best kryptonite algo miner out there. And they also created the actual kryptonite heavy algorithm, uh, which is still in use by some projects, not not uh, many. I think there's only a, a handful out there that are still using that. The Ryo Wallet Atom, we did a video on that, or I did a video on it. Uh, we talked about it for about an hour, I think. Uh, they've, they've built several wallets um, for the project, and the latest version of the desktop Atom Wallet uh, even has that built-in solo mining capability, which we also highlighted in one of the videos from this week, this past seven days. Uh, another really nice feature of the wallet is being able to quickly switch between multiple wallets without having to rename the files or anything like that, like you have to do with QT wallets. Um, I did three videos on the Atom wallet. One was the solo mining, one was install and config, one was uh, like a walkthrough of all the features. Um, and I kind of made a mistake whenever I was describing the multiple wallet features. I think. I, what I had done whenever I was looking at it, let me get to that part over here um, in the wallet. So whenever I was looking at this, I was thinking that if you uh, hit import, that you needed it, if you had a wallet that was already created that you like deleted out of here, or that you lost somehow and you needed to restore it from backup. But if it was created with this version of wallet, or if it was already imported, then you don't use the import feature. The import feature is, for a previous wallet from a previous version, like a, a legacy GUI wallet is what it's called. So um, I was in the video, I was clicking on import and then trying to find the the um, actual wallet and it was not, I mean, it was finding the files, but it wasn't gonna use it that way because the way the wallet works is it just looks in the location, the, the location that uh, other wallet files are in and whatever wallet files are there uh, is what it shows you on this screen. So, um, or on this uh, initial splash screen. So let me uh, fire up, let me get to that part here so I can show you what I'm talking about. So this is the, this is the wallet location. So you can see that it matches, like these files match over here. You'll have three files for each wallet. And the address one, you can actually, uh, you don't have to have it in order for the wallet to work. Um, but as soon as you launch the wallet, it'll create it for you. Um, but if you delete one that has addresses in it, then obviously it won't be in the wallet anymore, you know, or it won't be available to you in the address book. Uh, so, yeah, um, let me show you kind of what I mean here. So if you were to, I think I've got this stuff backed up. Um, another thing that I did in the video was this. I created a folder inside of here. And if you if you create a folder inside of your wallets folder, it's gonna kind of give you a weird look, okay? And what I mean is um, I created a folder called backups in that original video. And if I exit out of here, and then go back into it. I think I had to do this. Then it's gonna have a folder listed in the, in the um, wallet file listing, which is kind of weird, but you'll see what I'm talking about here. So see right here how it has this folder. So it, and, and there's no way of getting into it. It's not like you can actually navigate to it. It just sees it in this file structure over here and then it throws it up here with a question mark because cryptographically it's like, I don't know what this is, right? It's just some weird file or a folder in here. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You don't really want to start goofing around and putting folders in there because it'll really mess up the way that this looks. 
But let's say that you, um, I think it was this one. Yeah. So I think this one is the one I have a backup of. So I'm going to go into, I'm gonna, let's keep this up here too. I'm going to try to keep both of these up here at the same time. So I'm going to go into <clears throat> this wallet right here. I don't want to get too far into the wallets, but I did want to point this stuff out. So I'm going to go into this wallet. It doesn't have a password or anything. Um, oh, it does have four Ryo in there. Uh, I forgot that I sent that to it, but I'm going to actually delete it because I do have it backed up in another location. So you don't want to do this unless you know for sure that you have it backed up. And all I did to back it up was I copied those three files, right? I don't really need to copy the address unless I don't want to lose the address book, but there's nothing in the address book, I don't think. Yeah, it's empty anyway, so that didn't really matter. But um, So I'm going to actually delete this wallet. And again, don't do this unless you know you have a valid backup, unless you're, you really want to get rid of the wallet. So check that out. So you saw that once it deleted it from over here, it actually deleted the files from over here too. So you're not safe, right? It is literally, the, the wallet is literally managing this folder, um, you know, which is probably in settings, I believe. Yeah, right here. So um, while it's Ryo, and then inside of this, I, I, I suppose that it grabs it from here. I guess that this is where it puts everything by default, but it creates another folder in here called wallets, right? And um, it might actually get that from the registry, but I'm not 100% sure there. Um, but nonetheless, it deleted that, that actual wallet. It deleted the files, right? So if I exit out of this wallet, the Atom wallet, start it back up, it's not gonna be listed here anymore, right? So what you can do, if you have the backup, I went too far, um, you can come in here, grab your three files, I'm just gonna copy them, go into wallets, paste them in there, and then now, it's not gonna show up at first, right, because it hasn't reread that folder, the data in there. So I'm going to exit out of here. There might be a way of getting it to see it without doing this, but I'm just gonna exit and restart. And this was just some stuff that I was kind of struggling with in the, in, the, uh, in the video, so I wanted to kind of clear it up in the original video. So now you see it shows up in here. YouTube demo, 19 August. And if I go into this wallet, the, because it's all synced and everything, um, that four, Ryu should be in there, no, not quite yet, because it looks like it's scan. Yeah, down here at the bottom, see it scanning. So within a few minutes, it, it'll um, it'll show up and it'll have the four Ryu in there. It just has to scan the blockchain for, uh, you know, the transactions and stuff. I think there's a way. I probably could have. Um, I think there's some settings in here where I can tell it where to start. I think so I could make it start later. I don't remember. I remember seeing that somewhere, but I don't know where it's at right off the bat. But it's almost done. And this is something else that they've done a lot of work with is, is speeding up things like this so that people aren't freaking out like <laughs> that they lost their, their Ryo and stuff. So yeah, see it's already back in there. Everything's good. So. so hopefully that clears up that little part of the videos that I was kind of I kind of struggled with that, um, explaining it and showing and demoing it. So I just wanted to kind of cover that again. All right, let me see what y'all are talking about in the chat. I don't want to get too much into the chat because I'll get distracted. Serpent, you did a how to mine Loki? When? Recently? What's up, Michael Schubert? Yeah, Crypto Knight, um, I can help you with that. Or Serpent can too. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did a Loki video a while back. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and keep pressing on with the info here. See where we're at. So I covered that. Switching between the wallets is super nice. You know, if you wanted to. Um, you know, switch. This is what I was trying to show you, and then I got off on that little tangent. But um, basically, any file that's any wallet files that are in here, the keys and the actual, uh, I think it's 
I don't know what this actually ends with. It, do, it doesn't show, so I don't know what, what, what does it say as a file type. It doesn't even say a file type. Um, so that's your wallet file and your keys file there. And you can see one of them has, you know, four mag or whatever. I don't know if it's transactions or I don't know what, what all kind of data is in there, but um, whatever is in here will show up here as long as it's a valid um, wallet. I suppose if you put a pre or a uh, legacy uh, wallet in here, it might show up with that question mark. And then, and then you would go to the import feature or the import function and import it. And then it'll upgrade the wallet file to this newer version. I think that's the way it works. So I did three videos on Atom Wallet. I did the solo mining right here. I did the install and config. Not a lot of views. Not a lot of views on any of my videos, to be honest. Um, I don't know. YouTube hates me, I think. Uh, and, uh, and a wallet uh, walkthrough, an Atom wallet walkthrough. And I did all the how to mine stuff as well. But this was starting this week. I think that, that well, actually that was last week too, yeah. So yeah, we've been doing Ryo for <laughs> a solid week. So we also need to go through the wallet creation. Although I did that in the video, um, not really a, too much of a reason to revisit that, I don't think. I showed copying the wallet files in and out. Okay, so let's look at restoring from a seed. Um, let's see here, so what we can do is, since this is just a demo wallet, it's only got four in there. Um, let me go into this wallet. Let's see if I have this document. I don't. So I'm going to grab the seed for this. Don't steal it before the stream is over, please. Because see, with this information right here, my crypto isn't my crypto anymore. This is y'all's crypto. <laughs> so whoever gets it first. Um, if I can get that four Ryo out of there beforehand, then I'm going to do it. I'm just kidding. Y'all can have it. All right, so I got the seed. So what I'm going to do now is switch wallet. I actually no, cancel that. I'm going to delete this wallet. And I'm just going through some things that I didn't really cover in the original videos. And then I'm going to restore the wallet from seed. So you can see how that wallet is gone now, right? Because I deleted it. So restore wallet from seed. I'll call it YouTube test. And then I'm gonna control V and paste in the seed. And this is why they tell you your seed words are so important because this is literally your wallet. I mean, this is your, um, you know, how, how to restore your wallet. Oh, yeah, here's what I was talking about right here. You could actually restore it from a, a more recent date because I know that I created that wallet today. Maybe I did walk through this on the on the stream, but I think I, I, I think I struggled with something on it, so I, I wanted to kind of go over it again. So that'll actually make it faster because it doesn't have to look at the whole blockchain, right? So I'm going to go restore wallet. And then it says it, it was restored, so now it shows back up here. Boom. So that was a restore. And then also, if you didn't like the name of it, so you see how it's YouTube testing here, right? And if you go over here to your actual folder structure, there might be another way of renaming it, but this is the only way that I know how. So like you would rename it over here. So we'll go um, probably rename all of them. I don't know if you have to rename all of them to the same exact thing. It might throw you some errors if you don't. I didn't, I didn't test that before the show, so. All right, so see, it's not renamed over here yet, right? But I think if I go into it, if I open it, no, nope. see, it doesn't even know because I renamed it. So now, if I just exit out of here, And 
restart the wallet. Yeah, this is a Quasar wallet back there. Um, then it's probably gonna have a YouTube Savage name now, see? Right there, so that's how I renamed the wallet. And again, there might be, I don't know, I don't remember seeing a, like a rename feature in here, but that's how you would do it. And then they also have the super cool Quasar wallet, which is their, that's not it, which is their web wallet. Now, this is really neat because if you access the, the Ryo web wallet from the website, if you go to, let's see here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't have the link, so I'll just have to go and find it. Oh, it's under wallets here somewhere. Wallet, the ryowebwallet.com. So if you go here, the first time you go here, um, if you haven't done it already, it's going to come up and say, "Hey, do you want to install?" If you if you use a brow a um, Chrome based browser like Chrome or Brave, it's going to ask you if you want to install the the app. Basically, it's like a desktop app. Um, I don't know if it calls it an app or it's not a plugin. I think it calls it an app, and it'll look like this. So this is actually your interface to the web page, to the web wallet. And you can kind of see that right here. You got this hamburger up here that you can click. Um, and it kind of tells you where the app is getting its information from. And if I understand correctly, this is the same way that they're going to do the mobile wallet um, eventually. It'll be similar to how Conceal.Network does theirs. Um, where it's just web based. So the app will be able to be approved pretty easily if they do it that way. Uh, for like the app store and things like that, they won't give them such a heartache because uh, they're just accessing a web page basically. So it's super slick. Um, but I created a wallet in here just to show you. And something you can do is actually import this wallet to, now they don't recommend you do this, but you can import the wallet to the Atom wallet. And the, the reason that, you know, you don't really wanna have two wallets with the same keys accessing the same uh, blockchain and stuff like that. It's it's kind of a security thing. Um, but you can do that. Like, let's say you lost your wallet and you just had the seed phrase or something like that, um, which is kind of silly. You could still do it on, on here as well. But let's say you wanted to move it to the Atom wallet, the desktop wallet, you could. Um, you could import that, so. Uh, I think I can probably show you that real quick. I'm gonna grab the seed for this. There's zero, zero Ryo in there. Copy that. I hope this highlights how important those seed words are. So I'm just clicking restore wallet from seed. I'm gonna go Quasar test. Control V to paste it because you can't right click in there. I'm going to change the date to somewhere a little bit closer so it doesn't have to scan the whole blockchain. And no password. Make sure that you guys are putting passwords on your stuff. I'm just doing this for speed. So now that imported into the Atom wallet, the desktop wallet. So it's kind of neat. All right, so that is how we, that's, we, we covered all this. Uh, some of that we covered in the previous shows and in the, in, the, in the wallet shows, but not all of it. Um, some of that was a little bit of extra info. So another thing that's inside of here that I didn't cover very well is the, actually this is Adam, sorry. See how easy it is to get them confused? They look so similar, you know. Um, oh, you know what? One thing I forgot. I don't know if I mentioned this in the other video either. But whatever you size the Atom wallet to, it'll remember that each time you close it and stuff, which is kind of a nice little feature. You know how some wallets don't care what, what you size it to? It'll just open whatever the default is. This one actually saves it if you close it. You know, if you size it a certain way and then close it, it'll save it. So that's kind of neat. Um, but what I was going to cover was the, and what I didn't cover was the integrated address generator. 
whenever I see, and that just kind of proves that I didn't go and actually do uh, like a demo myself before the stream. I was literally going through that that one video, um, this one right here, where I went through Quasar. It was real time. I literally had not even made a wallet on Quasar yet. So whenever I got to this point and I was looking at these uh, integrated addresses and I hadn't seen that in the Quasar like documentation, I was like, hmm, that's kind of weird. Uh, so I didn't really talk about it. I kind of like skimmed over it. Uh, but a integrated address is typically it's going to be used for exchanges or in the case of like a merchant that needs to have a single address that multiple people send to. So you could give each of your clients or your customers a uniform uh, payment ID uh, to distinguish which transactions are theirs, right? Uh, and this is, you know, kind of advanced. Normally, if you're just mining and holding, then obviously you don't really need that. Um, but it could, it, it, it's very useful, and uh, you know, it's just a feature that I wanted to uh, briefly discuss. It also has a QR code and all that stuff. So, uh, but typically, it's an exchange or merchant uh, type of address just to delineate it out between all the different uh, payments while using a single address. Cause could you imagine, you know, having thousands or hundreds of thousands of different addresses, you know, that would be nuts. Uh, so that's the way that they do it. Uh, and the reason that this is necessary, obviously, well not obviously, but the reason that this is necessary is because it's a privacy coin and all those transactions are hidden, right? So you have to have some way of, of figuring out, um, you know, who sent you what money basically, or what crypto. So that's what that's for. It's a very narrow use case for merchants and exchanges for the most part. So hopefully that clears up that. Another thing that they are doing, which is super cool, um, you know that they have, they do have a dev fund, right? So it's one of the things that I don't necessarily like, um, but I've talked about this a lot. I mean, the days of, uh, you know, just creating a crypto just for the good of man, <laughs> that 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 ship has sailed, right? And that, I used to say this all the time in the stream, especially in the random coin mining stream, is like, look, if you bring, if you if your goal is to be the next global cryptocurrency, you need to get a new goal, right? I mean, you got to bring something else to the table because that has already been done, right? Um, I mean, you know, sure, there's some efficiencies to be gained with speed and things like that. But I mean, just in general, if you're if you're if your Bitcoin talk thread says we are going to be the next global currency, then I keep on scrolling. I'll blast right past that because uh, it just means nothing, you know, these days. So, uh, but my point is, is that a lot of the projects that come out now actually have to have some type of funding, or else they're just not going to exist, right? They're not going to make it. They have to have some kind of funding, and I and I would rather them be funding funding internally than through like an ICO, right, uh, or an IEO or whatever. I would rather them be funding themselves because that is it's kind of like an incentive, right? If if their project does well by their development and the features that they implement and all those different things, you know, that go into the project, then they're monthly or yearly or ever however they're they're disseminated will be worth more right is the way to look at it now i would hope that the devs don't dump on the market right i hope that they're as committed as a lot of the investors and things like that and they just hold and um you know whatever so that's what i would hope but some of them have to eat right and and they're on their Ryo store that we'll see in a few minutes, there's not food on there. So <laughs> you know, uh, there's not coffee or donuts or anything like that on there. So uh, yeah, so it's okay. I just, you know, it's just one of the things that I kind of look at whenever I look at a project, I do like to talk about the funding model, you know, but they try to be tra transparent here. They have a, a dev fund explorer that I'm showing you right now uh, that shows the payouts. It shows how things are going. They don't, um, I want to say that they don't, they, sh they show like, they break it down by staff. Um, yeah, staff, hosting, marketing, miscellaneous exchanges and unused. Um, you know, so they do kind of, I hate that they have to pay to be on an exchange. I don't like that. 
Looks like they paid something. I wonder what that was for. I don't remember. Uh, that was this year, though. It says 130000 for an exchange. Um, that could have been, what was it, Crex, I think? I don't even remember. Let's go over here and check out what they're doing right now anyway. Oh, wow. <laughs> Savage bump. <laughs> I just started talking about it and boom. I love it. All right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm halfway kidding, but it does seem like it, it's odd that that happens sometimes. All right. So, yeah, it must have been Trex, uh, Crex24 because I don't think that... I don't know how Trade Ogre works, to be honest. It could have been it could have been either one of them, I guess. I don't know. Y'all are probably telling me in chat over here. Yeah, so it was Crex. Okay. Um, I mean, look at this volume. It's not a lot of volume, but like the the devs and the and the and the contributors point out, this is like real volume, right? So this is someone going into Trade Ogre and actually dropping 1,100. It's not some. It's not the the exchange itself doing uh, wash trading or whatever, right? It's it's real volume. Um, it's extremely low, but you know it's real. So that has to matter. That has to count for something. Oh, okay, so they sold it to Wales so that they could be listed. I get it. Um, yeah, so they, they use the dev fund. It's got some transparency to it, but for the most part, you don't really know exactly what's being distributed and when. You kind of have to just trust them. You know, you don't know what, what the address is. You know, what, you don't know exactly where this Ryo is going, right? Um, the, the actual addresses. There might be some transparency there too, but I don't, not, not on this. This doesn't show you that information, right? And the way I look at dev funds is, you know, if you're going to have one, you better have transparency on it uh, to instill the confidence and the trust in your project. I mean, no one, no one really wants to be a part of a project or invest in a project when there's really no telling where the devs, the dev funds are going, right? Um, you know, but like I said, the privacy coins don't allow you to see the addresses, so it's kind of tough for them to be completely transparent because otherwise it wouldn't work. It's not as a privacy coin, right? You can look at some things over here on their Explorer. I'll check that out real quick. And then you can see that there are some entries in here that are 56.28. There's a lot of them, right? Or somewhere around there, right? Um, now, all the devs or you know, contributors or longtime Ryo folks that are in here don't say anything all right because i'm going to do a little giveaway here the first person to post in the chat or comments um what this is why you can see it on the blockchain even though it's a privacy coin um if you post your ryo address and the answer to what that value is there then i will give you two of these so that'd be like 112 ryo something like that so there you go a little little trivia or quiz for you see if we can get get the right answer in here and it can't be someone you know like a dev or anything like that no one's super close to the project all right, so that is the Block Explorer. You can kind of see how it's got a bunch of question marks on it, and that's just other transactions. You don't even know how much they are. Unless you go into it, you can see, uh, sometimes you can see the size, the actual transaction size. All right, so what's next? Uh, they also have in infrastructure and support. That's a section on their website, I believe, that they talk about um, some things that they've got going on in that arena for infrastructure and support. Uh, this, the, the cool thing about Ryo, another cool thing, not to drone on and on about it, but one thing is their support community is far reaching with about, they have about 10 social channels, I believe. Uh, let's see here, I think it's down here at the bottom. 
Let me scroll down here. Yeah, the social links, they have about 10, and most of the devs are in all of them. Uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, I think uh, PsychoCrypt isn't on Twitter. I don't blame him, um, you know, uh, but they do have other groups, and I think the, the best support probably comes from Discord and Telegram. Although Discord, yeah, there it is there. Uh, so Discord and Telegram, you'll probably get the, the most uh, support. Ryo RU from, um, he's a contributor. He's really good with support. He's helped me a lot just with stupid questions that I have and things like that. So, uh, but you can get, get support pretty much any one of those uh, social media outlets. And again, it just blows my mind that there's only three devs, three core devs, you know, in this project. It's, it's insane. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that contribute in many ways, but, um, this is, a, this is a super intense project for just three core devs. They also have this cool thing called Ryo Blocks. I think I skimmed over it here a minute. And then this I have not even um, brought up at all in any instance, in any of the previous videos or anything like that. Uh, Ryo Blocks is like where they put links to some cool stuff. Basically, some of this we've already seen. Like we, we went to the Block Explorer um, another thing that they have is the uh, remote nodes, the public nodes. So if you click on that, you can see uh, some information about nodes. So you, you know what to connect to. Like if, you, if you're running a client, uh, a command line interface wallet, um, you know, you can actually connect to a public node and not have to sync the whole blockchain on your computer. Uh, you know, we talked about that a little bit. You've got an Onion uh, remote node for Tor, the Tor network, and basically this is like ultra secure uh, way of connecting to a node uh, if you're using that. And then it's got the public nodes down here, the official one, and then it's got a hash vault node. So that you can connect to these um, just to be able to uh, remember in the wallet whenever you're over here messing around with the settings. Actually, not this one. This is Quasar. I get those confused all the time. So if you go over here to settings, and then you got local remote daemon nodes and stuff like that, so you can choose it down here. Actually, no. The, yeah, this is remote node host right here, and that is uh, what this. This is actually your setting. Um, so this is over here on the nodes page. I think it's the same. What was that at? Yeah, here we go. So that was the same uh, address. So I think the way that they describe it, I want to see that that it is a. Um, how did they describe that? I'm gonna forget. That's not what I want to do. Yeah, somewhere on here, I thought that it gave me a pretty good example or a description of what the remote node was. Not a big deal um, at this point. All right, uh, let's see here. So we got that. We also, uh, one thing that's not in uh, Ryo blocks over here is if you click on the little uh, link at the top left, you know, it takes you to the beginning. Um, it takes you to all these different things but if you look on here there's not uh, one for the solo pool uh, Ryo blocks which is also a part of Ryo blocks I don't know why it's not on this actual page um, or a link to it I don't know if it's just new or what but uh, it looks like this and we went here whenever we were doing the solo mining it looks very similar to uh, the wallet you know the wallet interface for mining as well so it's kind of cool and another thing that I don't believe, actually it might be on the pools. Let's go over here to the pool list. Yeah, the profit calculator. So remember that this is here. Uh, if you're mining, I think I was mining at 15, total of 15 hash today. Um, right around there. Uh, 15, it would be 15,000, sorry. Um, with those two rigs, so that comes out to yeah, that sounds about right. About $7 a day if you're trading it in right away. 
what I would look at is this number because I would be, you know, being a hobby miner, I am just trying to accumulate. I'm not worried about trading it in and paying for electricity or overhead or nothing like that. Uh, so this is the number that I'm focused on because if I'm in my mind, if I'm thinking, okay, if if Ryo goes to ten cents, you know, or a dollar, if it goes to a dollar, then today I was mining one hundred and ninety-seven dollars in one day, right? Uh, it's kind of the way I look at it. You just gotta kind of evaluate the project and figure out, okay, where is this going? Is it going to go to five cents? Is it going to go to ten cents? Is it going to go to twenty? You know, and then that makes this number mean something. And it means something a lot different than this number over here. <laughs> so that's why I, I just, I don't, I hate when people really focus on the USD value of crypto. It's kind of like silly to me, you know? So, I mean, I know that we always compare, you know, we, we have to have something to compare it to. I get that, but um, yeah, I look more at the, how much I'm accumulating each day and what I think it's gonna be worth in the future. That's, that's the way I do it. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not, this is not financial advice or none of that stuff, but that's the way I do it. So they also have in Ryo blocks, they also have, um, and again, this was actually, that was accessible. Yeah. Um, from this little drop down here, they also have this cool thing puzzles, but I think that they're all already done. Uh, they had the, uh, looks like looks like they somehow use like seed words and things like that in here because they have a list of them here um, All the seed words and these are your are seed words that they use in all the wallets. It's, there's a finite number of of actual words that they use um, But Yeah, so there were these little puzzles. They're all solved I think and you you actually were able to win some Ryo if you solved it So kind of cool They need more of those. I don't know if they're working on more or what, but that was kind of cool. They also have, let's see, I think that's all of Ryo blocks. Oh no, they also have the store. So in the store, which is kind of cool, they have Ryo swag, I guess is the way you say it, right? And it actually, you pay with Ryo. And I went through the process. I was going to do it, but I, you know, if I do that, I'm going to basically dox myself because you know you're you're going to be able to see my everything, right? Because I have to get it shipped to me and all that. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but you just know that it actually accepts Ryo, so that's kind of cool. And they got a pretty good selection of stuff. It looks like some pretty high end stuff as far as quality and stuff. I like, I like t-shirts. I'm probably going to get this one right here. You know, I like wearing t-shirts on the stream and stuff. So showing my support and whatnot. So that's their store. It's store.ryoblocks.com. Pretty cool. And I think that's all of the Ryoblox um, info here. We went through all this and just keep in mind that there's a couple of things that aren't on here. Um, like the solo pool isn't on here. And the, I think that was it, right? Yeah, um, something else that they got going on on there that they've got going on on there in their project is called Ryo for Business, and there's like a Ryo business room, and this is for exclusive people that have fifty thousand Ryo or more, right? And it's not that you have to send the Ryo to them; um, it's just that you have to prove with view key and key image export that. Um, that you have in your possession 50,000 Ryo. And the reason that it's like this is they want people that are invested, right? So to make, to kind of like guide the project and make recommendations and things like that. So that's what, uh, you know, collaborate and discuss things with the project and build and all that stuff. So that's what this is about. Um, it's not a pump room, you know, uh, the, the members don't get to actually decide the direction of the project. They just contribute, you know, their thoughts, right? So it's not like a board of directors, like it says right here. It says right here, you don't have to send them 50,000. That's not what it's about. It's just showing your commitment. And then um, if your balance drops below 50,000, then uh, the, the, the bot will remove you from the channel. Because this is a, um, I think it's a Discord channel. It might be a Telegram. Yeah, uh, Telegram. So it's a Telegram channel. And that Ryo Sharkbot will kick you out if your balance drops below 50,000. 
because you have to submit this information so that it can view your um, balance, right? So you have to submit that information to the bot and then the bot manages it from there. I suppose it queries from time to time to figure out if anybody's dropped below 50,000. So that's neat. Another neat feature that they got going on there. All right, they also have web uh, Rio for web developers and uh, their customers. So the Rio devs have created a WooCommerce plugin for web developers, and that's actually what the Rio store uses. Uh, so you already kind of saw it in action. Um, but they actually have, you know, where developers can go over here to the GitHub and actually get the information that they need to implement it on their uh, websites and everything. So this is cool if you're a dev and want to accept Rio. All the info is there for that. And then on the, uh, you know, obviously with security, with privacy and security uh, is, you know, clearly the focus of Rio. So they're always doing more research on that. Uh, the core development path, the next things that they've got going on, they're not, uh, they don't like put like a whole lot out there, like intense le amounts of projections as far as like what they're going to um, you know, work on and stuff like that. They kind of keep it kind of short and simple as to the next, the next thing's not simple. That's really the bad word, but uh, they don't, they don't have a long list of roadmap items, right? Because they want to be able to focus on those specific um, ones that are important. And right now they're looking at uh, cool stuff like five to 10 X wallet sync speed up. Uh, that's going to come into play whenever they do another uh, feature uh, that's going to uh, have uh, faster transactions um, processing. Well, wait, let me back up, back up a little bit. Cause they're, they're looking at, there's a, yeah, the compression. That's what I was trying to say. The crypto note uh, blockchain compression. They're, they're looking to get down to below one gig for Monero and a hundred mag for Rio. That's huge because right now, even the Rio blockchain is 15 gig and they're talking about compressing it to a hundred. That is insane. I mean, that's like, that's an insane amount of compression. So, um, that's going to speed up the sync time, which is like number one above there. And then number four listed here, it says, uh, you know, combination of faster processing, number one, and compressed blockchain and specialized server to create custom Electrum, Electrum-like wallets. Wow, that was loud, loud uh, thunder out there. I don't know if y'all heard that or not. But yeah, so th these are the uh, core development path cool stuff in the progress and in progress. I'm sure the folks in here are talking about it. Board Alchemist. Thanks for all that extra info in there. I appreciate it. Some other stuff they got going on. They got address tools. This is also on their website down here at the bottom, I believe. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, Rio address tools. So you can have, you have like an address validator um, if you have someone's out address and you want to validate it, uh, you can decode the public key. You can actually make an integrated address from here, from this web-based tool. And you can also make a QR code from an address, public address. So that's kind of neat. And again, this is hanging off of their website. It's all the way at the bottom. Rio address tools down here. They also have a paper wallet that is right here, I believe. So you could use, um, this is kind of cool. It goes ahead and throws it up there. As soon as you go to it, you've got one address here and you could actually, I actually did this earlier. I, I imported um, the wallet to, I don't know if I did it to Adam or if I did it to Quasar, but I've actually brought this into one of them. I think that's, um, let me see here. Yeah, right here. So this is an address that I brought in 
from the, uh, I generated a, an address here. I just you know copied it, copied this uh, mnemonic seed, and imported it in, into the uh, Atom wallet. So it was kind of cool. But uh, it, you know you can use uh, it says custom entropy for a deterministic wallet. You can um, use the browser pseudo random number generator, the PRNG, uh, to use that you know to generate the wallet, or you can put a put uh, some text in there. So this is considered offline because you're not using a, a, an actual wallet to generate it, but it is a valid address. And just real quick, the blockchain specs, the algorithm, we talked about this before, we've gone through all the, the mining videos and stuff like that, but just to go back through it real quick, uh, the algorithm is Kryptonite GPU, it's brand new, it works well on um, AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. It's FPGA ASIC botnet resistant. Uh, the block times are about, well, they're 240 seconds. If you go to what to mine, you can see that. And if you did um, put the answer to the question about what the 56.28 was in there, I'm giving the answer right here. <laughs> Remember in the block explorer, uh, the question I had, I don't know if anybody put the answer in there, but you'll, if you did and you were first, let me know because I, I'll have to scroll back up through all the chat and figure that out. Um, I should just make it to where you're the first one to comment on the video after it's posted, but too late now. Uh, uh, so yeah, you can see right here the block time is 4 minutes and 10 seconds. It adjusts, you know, it's, it's never going to be exactly uh, 4 minutes. It adjusts every block. The block reward is 56.28 plus fees, and that's adjusted every six months. And they remember they have that plateau um, emission where it's actually going, this is going to increase, I believe is the way this works, if I remember right. We're still in an increasing section here, uh, right here. So we're, you know, in 2020 is whenever it's going to. Uh, max out and then it's going to decrease over time like this but right now it's actually going to go up pretty soon I would assume it's going to go up pretty soon um, seeing as how this line right here is 2020 I think uh, so I don't know what it's going to go up to it looks like we're right here right now so it's probably going to go up to like 65 maybe I don't know and the total supply is 88 million 188,888 and that will be em emitted over 20 years, uh, and that includes the 8 million dev fund. Um, and then it will have 263,000 coins each year for inflation. Um, see here, do, 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 do. yep. And the development fund of the 8 million will be emitted together with the block reward over six years. So after six years, I guess that that's going to be over the dev fund thing. So, whew, okay, that is literally going to do it for me. That was another hour of Ryo. <laughs> you would think, you would think that I might like Ryo at this point. And I do. I've done a whole week, seven days of nothing but Ryo. Um, but I'm glad I did. It's a good project. I like it. Let's see what you guys are saying in chat over here. It is like exactly one hour. So yeah, I think that's gonna be it for me guys. I will see y'all, I will probably do, um, well, tomorrow actually at the top, I was talking about what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. What I plan on doing is the co-owners of the shared rigs here, uh, the ones that are running Simple Mining over here, are supposed to be on the stream. And we're gonna discuss back and forth about what we're going to do in the, with the, with the rigs as far as what we're going to be mining probably going to be ccx still and what we're going to do with the funds that we've acquired you know over this month or the crypto that we've acquired over the month after we and i'm going to go through the spreadsheet and show like how i'm paying for electricity and how i document the electricity and how much it costs and stuff like that so tomorrow's going to be way out of the norm it's going to be it should be pretty cool if I can at least get one of the one of the co-owners to show up. I, I think I might be able to get two of them in there, 
So I think that that'll be kind of cool. Uh, definitely way different than a normal stream of mine. So should be interesting. I think it'll be cool to go through the, the economics. I do have a video on the economics and how I kind of do it. Um, let's see where that's at. It's not too far back here. The co-owned co -owned rig, mining rig economics. And this was, I, I kind of discussed how I uh, do that function, you know. Uh, it's not really like a, a business with investors or anything like that. It's just some guys that got together and, and you know, all went through some money in and we all built rigs and, and they're here <laughs> and I manage them. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool the way that we do it. But we'll go over that. It's nothing too fancy. I mean, it's very manual. There's not a lot of automated stuff. Uh, my intent was to eventually use the Ravencoin network once they have rewards and um, they already have assets. They already have unique assets, which is important. Um, but once they get the rewards and the messaging and the voting enabled on the network, then this pro the, my my vision for how I wanted to do this initially. Uh, might be able to actually be implemented with the Ravencoin network and be able to vote, message, and distribute uh, rewards, you know, whatever the crypto is that month that we mine and then convert it to whatever, like let's say we're mining CCX and we, we earned 1,000 CCX that month and then we transfer that on the 20th of the month. We always transfer it to, uh, you know, basically a USD value so that we know how to distribute it out between how much the electric costs and all that stuff. Um, and actually this month I've got some parts because I replaced a couple of fans. So, you know, there's a little bit more that, that'll come out. Um, but, uh, you know, that's part of the Ravencoin network. That's one of the features. And at some point I, I would hope to get it all automated to where, um, not that I don't want to talk to the guys, <laughs> but, you know, at least we can use the blockchain and use Ravencoin for what it was meant to meant to be so yeah if you go to let me look at playlists here I actually have videos on that too uh, Ravencoin no, I want to go to the playlist here we go uh, right here there's one that's asset use case I think it was this one that's whenever my machine was crashing because there's two of them I think so I think it was this one and this one talks about uh, how we did it or how I did one. I gave one example somewhere in here. Uh, maybe it was in the, the other video. I thought there was a part three. Uh, here we go. I think this is it. Yeah, so this walked through how I was using the Ravencoin network uh, for this whole venture, the shared rigs. I, I created one asset, and you know, if you're if you're interested in Ravencoin at all, this is a pretty good video explaining at least one use case of how it can be used. But it's limited because at this time, all they had was the one uh, asset feature or the unique assets which is how I created this particular asset. And then I used that IPFS with it, the interplanetary file system, uh, to store this file that related to one GPU that's in the rig, right? And the intent is to eventually, you know, just like I was saying, distribute funds, distribute uh, using voting to determine what we're gonna mine that month and uh, basically automate it through the Ravencoin network. Eventually, hopefully that happens. So that'd be neat. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty good video on how to how I how I intend on using it. And I talk about it a lot in here. So just showing you some more cool videos, right? So that is going to do it for me, I believe. Take a quick look at the market right quick before we get off of here. It's actually going up a little bit. I wasn't sure we were going to break 10.8 today, but that's good. 
Heath is back over 200. That's nice. Link is doing all right. Okay. LTC is zero. <laughs> all right. Let's see what y'all are talking about over here. Yeah, I'm actually going to talk. I want to talk about atomic swaps because I really think that, you know, people talk about killer apps and things that are going to really spur adoption. In my mind, there is no doubt that Atomic Swaps is going to play a humongous role in that. I mean, a huge role. Uh, I think that it's really, really an important aspect of, of crypto for sure. All right. If I don't, if I don't get off of here, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to blab and and go off again. So I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys uh, tomorrow night. Same time, 9:30. Uh, I might start a little bit earlier tomorrow, just simply because it might the stream might run a little long uh, because of the content that we're going to be doing, going over everything. It usually takes me about an hour to get everything sorted out um, if I do it manually. So I will see you guys tomorrow night. Stay savage.